This is Matt Hurt at Obsessive Viewer on Twitter. This is Tiny at Obsessive Tiny on the Twitter sphere. And this is Cartoons Plural. And you can find me at I am Mike White on Twitter. <laughs> Cartoons Plural. <laughs> and this is ObsessiveViewer.com's The Obsessive Viewer Podcast. Was that a Key and Peele reference? Yeah, and a nice. football reference because... Yes. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, My heart will go on. <laughs> Close. Oh, <man. laughs> Welcome to the Obsessive Viewer Podcast, where a weekly movie and TV podcast that covers a specific topic, be a genre, trope, movie, or show each episode. You can find back episodes at obs- uh, ovpodcast.com, and also check out the blog at obsessiveviewer.com. Uh, really quick, li- quickly, whoa, really quick, guys, before we get started, I want to mention that I was just, uh, within the last hour, recording with uh, Cinema Rolls Podcast, which you can find at, at Cinema Rolls Pod on Twitter. Um well, I was on for their. They were. I was lucky enough to be a guest on their on their podcast, and uh, I just finished recording it, and it was awesome. So you can check it out in the show notes and at uh, their website. Cool. So yeah, uh, we're talking about football movies because the Super Bowl is this Sunday. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> yeah, I'm. <laughs> it's the Sunday. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> Sunday. That's the one with all the commercials, right? That's the one. That's, that's the <laughs> biggest television event of the year, every single year. The year. <laughs> that's the one where I take the t- take the opportunity for people not to be out and about to go see a movie in an empty theater, <laughs> 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 which is what I did last year. And I'm planning on doing it this year. Um, yeah, but Katy Perry is going to be on the halftime show this year. Yeah, she is. Oh, Do you care about that? No, not even a little bit. <laughs> Oh, no, Katy Perry's awesome. Uh, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah. Maddie, you're a firework. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're going to uh, hear me roar. God. Something about me. I don't know. Yeah, I thought for the longest time that she rhymed fire with fire in that. I don't care. In the cor- course of that. And then I, I brought it up at. No, you know, it, it, I looked like an idiot when I was corrected. <laughs> uh, so, anyway. Um, yeah. So the foosball movies. The foo- Talking about foosballs for the devil. <laughs> yes. With friends. Which- Slap hands. <laughs> <laughs> Which that's that's the best football movie of all time, right? It oh. is. Well, we can end the conversation here. We're going to go long, but we could just stop here and say the greatest football movie of all time. Of course. Of course. Adam Sandler's masterpiece. <laughs> the water boy. So many words in that sentence should never be put together. <laughs> the best <laughs> Of anything should never be Adam Sandler's anything. <laughs> Matt Farusa Balk is in it. Yes, she is. <laughs> it, feature, it features mag- magical water from the Arctic. God. It does. It, it can does. bring people it back does. from right. unconsciousness or whatever. I yeah. I think I just like kind of had the plane in the background when we were doing our Summer Sandler thing. He rides God, a lawnmower. Is that a beautiful movie or what? <laughs> just terrific. Yeah. I don't. I can't. I honestly can't tell if you guys are serious or not. <laughs> uh, I'm not. <laughs> I don't think you are. <laughs> um, He's yeah. the best. Co- He's the best corner since Joe Montana. <laughs> Joe Montana was a quarterback. <laughs> I said Joe Montana. <laughs> um, so, yeah, football movies. I We have a set list here because I can only think of two um, because I'm a stereotype movie nerd. <laughs> um, but And I'm actually moving it around because I want to put my first one first because I think it would be a good entry point to it. Oh, um, okay. Well, yeah, well, because, oh, okay. Boy. Oh boy! Just kidding. Uh, what I'm... he's doing is pulling an audible <laughs> at the line. <laughs> I am audible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Omaha. I'm, what I'm so what I'm doing is I'm sitting there listening on the on the line of scrimmage, listening to audio uh, audiobooks. <laughs> God. Audible.com, oh guys. Moving on. Wow. All right, let's not talk about audible.com. They don't sponsor us. That's gonna take a lashing in this episode. I know. It's uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you know, football's fun. I played football for a year. I like and the screech in your voice there that totally <laughs> sells you out. I played football, guys. Oh, fuck. Guys, guys, Matt played football on the field of the RCA Dome where the Colts play. I did. Ah. Played. 
you did. Yes, I did. And the whole time, I didn't, because at practice, I didn't pay attention because I was like, I don't care. <laughs> um, and the whole time, I was like, I was a lineman, and our friend Kyle was right next to right next to me. And every play, I was like, Hey, who do I who do I block? <laughs> and he'd point <laughs> to who I had to block <laughs> every every down. We were ahead forty something to like yeah, five, we were, or which is exactly why I was on the field, and okay. I couldn't find my mouthpiece anywhere. For some reason, or I think I gave my mouthpiece to someone else because they couldn't find theirs, That's and gross. I was left without one, and I needed to find one before I went on the field, and I think I found one. I don't know. Good story, bro. Yeah. So anyway, um, football movies, uh, you know, and this is a good segue to that because I'm not into sport, professional sports that much. I like going to them, but I'm not just, I'm not an active participant or uh, in the, uh, the, the community aspect of it. I don't care if... Um, balls were deflated. Although that is kind of an interesting thing going on. Bill Nye, the science guy, weighed in on it today. Yeah, so I saw that. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't really care. I, I get kind of awkward and I get uncomfortable when like I'm around people who are very much emotionally invested in a in a in a scoring match that's going on on the telly. <laughs> um, <laughs> so like, so like if they're cheering and stuff, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. There's nothing you can do to stop. I, I don't. I, I feel weird, and then they. <laughs> I, I just feel so – that's the nerdiest thing you can say. But I do like football movies, though, and, and sports movies are always fun because they're always uplift, uh, uplifting. And they're – they're if they're done right, they're very um, enter, entertaining in the, the filmmaking techniques of showing that. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty impressive if, the, if they can be pulled off right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yep. But I wanted to bring up this one first, if we if we want to just dive right into it. Yep, do it. Um, Quarterback it. The, <laughs> hey, um, I, Little Giants. I like we have a set list of uh, of these movies, and I bumped this one up to the top because I want to talk about it first. Um, when I was a kid, like I mean, second, third grade. Uh, I watched this movie, and like this was like my movie to watch all the time, all the time. Um. And it was just, it was, it's such a fun kind of cute kids movie. And it's, I don't know what else really to say about it. But like growing up watching it and watching it like later when I could appreciate kind of the more thematic elements of it, I guess. But the, the kind of sibling rivalry of it, it, it felt like kind of really uh, much more heart than what, what watching it as a second grader can, can give me. Um, the movie, of course, is about... Uh, Pee Wee Football League's uh, uh, Pee Wee Football League with uh, two brothers that have, that grew up in in Ohio and which at the time I lived in Ohio too, so that that was also another nice little thing. Yeah. But one of them played by um, Ed O'Neill, right? Yeah, was a uh, professional football player, and then the other one stayed behind and was you know he ran a gas station. And it's kind of the, they're competing, and then. The ones that get cut from cut from the Pee Wee League, played by the are prof- coached by the professional athlete of the brothers. Uh, they join up with the other brother, and they have this scrimmage, and that's kind of the, the the big point of the movie. But what I really love about it is just the interplay between the t- between the siblings, and it's kind of it's a movie about outcasts, and it's in a movie it's a movie about living in uh, the shadow of of someone, and and kind of bringing them back down to earth, I guess, because they're kind of really big headed, and um, it. There's this, there's elements of it that involve the town water tower, um, with like it, it's it's just such a nice sentiment to leave off on because especially as someone who is a sibling myself, I just really appreciated that aspect of it. So, what do you guys think of Little Giants? Never seen it. Are, oh my god, are you serious, <laughs> Never Tiny? Never seen it. <laughs> you know, you brought it up for your uh, your nostalgia pick. Forever yeah. ago, I right? did, didn't I? Yeah, and I'd never oh. seen yeah. it then. So. And that's uh, and Dude. I haven't seen it since you brought it up, and I haven't seen it since I saw it twenty years ago. I don't know, but I do remember loving Whoa. that a lot. Um, the thing with that is like the 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 star on one of the teams is a girl, isn't it? Yeah, Icebox. Yeah, Icebox. <laughs> is that is that what it is? Icebox mm-hmm. named like for the refrigerator, right? Uh, I think so. I don't know. Yeah, it's gotta be. Yeah, I, yeah, because she's cold. I guess she's cold as ice. She's brutal. Mike is. What position does he play? Mike is referring to a, a professional football player. Yeah, the refrigerator. Oh, the yeah. He played for the, the Bears, fridge. of course. Oh, okay. You sure? I guess. Yeah, it might be a reference to that guy. One of the greatest football teams uh-huh. of all time. <laughs> sure. Nineteen eighty-five Chicago Bears. Yeah. 
Cool. Yeah. Anyway, was he yeah, in any no, movies? No, I remember liking that movie a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, it's I, definitely I, on the list of ones that I that I need to watch again. Yeah. Uh, I feel I, I want to see what Tiny thinks of the annexation of Puerto Rico play that's in it. Oh, <laughs> so it's obviously very illegal within the rules of of football. I think. Oh, really? I think so. I, I mean, they have like lateral passes throughout throughout the entire play. I think is that illegal? No. Uh, what is it? Forward pass. I don't know. Forward pass. Uh, whatever. Like, uh, I don't know. They do something. They they do something that's really illegal within the confines of football. I think. Oh, do they? Okay. I think. I don't know. Maybe I'm forgetting about it. Hmm. Um, you can. I mean, if they do laterals, then that's okay. Yeah, you can it's, lateral as much as you want. Isn't it something like you can't throw it back? You can't. You, can. you can't do more than one forward pass. Okay, I think they do that like three times throughout the play. Okay, well, it's just throw massive it forward. Like, I think so. Yeah. Or am I, maybe I'm mis- misremembering it. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, there- this is like elementary football here. <laughs> so there's a line of scrimmage, and you can throw it forward if you're behind that line right. to someone in front of that line. That's what the, it was. They were they were traveling the whole time. They didn't bounce the ball at all. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you didn't even say dribble. <laughs> the ball. I know. They, they didn't bounce the ball. Oh my god. <laughs> Sports movies. <laughs> oh, that is beautiful. Oh, I didn't even said that. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, Little Giants, watch it. If it's if the annexation of Puerto Rico is legal, email us <laughs> and let us know. Um, my God, <laughs> we'll get back. We'll get back to you guys on that one. So yeah, you, uh, come back next week for the resolution of the what is it? The annexation of Puerto Rico. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, who wants to bring up the next one then? Uh, let's just go back to the top of the list uh, that yeah. we had, and we'll talk about the the one that I really wanted to talk about was Varsity Blues. Mm-hmm. Have you guys seen it? I don't want your life. But I don't want your life. I love this movie so much. This is a, this is a high school favorite for me. Okay. And uh, I remember the trailers were a big deal, the I don't want your life, um, and we said that all the time. But then I saw the movie. It's a really um, – it's a really good example of late '90s teen comedies mi- mixed with the the sports drama aspect of it all. It's a very '90s type movie. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it has uh, it has Dawson in it yeah. at the height of his fame, and uh, and it's just a really good football movie. Um, and it's a really it's a really good teen movie about what it's like to be uh, a teenager pushed to do something uh, he doesn't want to do. Yeah. It's it's yeah. kind of about potential. Yeah, and definitely. and uh, uh, Vanderbeek's speech at the end of the movie about uh, what is it forty forty five minutes for the rest of your life? Next forty eight minutes for the next forty eight minutes. The next forty eight <laughs> minutes. Yeah. yeah, I say <laughs> that <laughs> that. That's what he says in the speech, and I was like, oh, he's a my because <laughs> it was nineteen ninety nine. That's pretty good. Was my memory of Varsity Blues is marred severely by not another teen movie. Um, <laughs> Which borrowed heavily from yes. from it, yeah. Which is a um, fantastic movie. Oh my! I love yes. that movie. The talk, the best of those movies. Yeah. Let's talk about football movies and 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 anyway. Also, wow. the trailer for it had "Nice Guys Finish Last" by Green Day. Yeah. yeah. The music. Uh, and so the I movies. was obsessed with that trailer and that song when that came out. The music right. is terrific. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really is. Um, ACDC. There's some. Uh, oh, Foo Fighters. Uh huh. Good music in that movie. Mm-hmm. Coming of 90s age, rock. Yeah, coming yeah. of age music, sort of. Yeah. 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 Is it coming of age music, or is it just music because it was, like, at a time when we Where were, coming, we were of coming of age? Well, I mean, you know, ACDC's not really for our generation. Oh, yeah. true. For more of an 80s generation. Right. Yeah. But hmm. but Foo Fighters, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just kind of wondering if maybe we just associate it with that, given our age. Kind of an interesting... Thing to think about. What did you guys think of Scott Kahn in this movie? Um, I thought he was kind of perfect. He's yeah, the receiver. I think they're all kind of perfect. And yeah. That's, yeah. I, I feel like huh. the movie catches a bad rap mostly because it's known for the I don't want your life. Yeah. But it's a really good movie. It is. It is. I, I like it a lot. I'm, it's a little – it gets a little like kind of th- – I guess I guess my if I'm looking for complaints about it or if I'm looking to critique it, it's like the like uh, oh my god, uh, John Voight's character is a little too villainous. Yeah, but I mean it's I mean it makes sense. I mean it's you know 
Texas know, football. Man. Have you seen? I was gonna say, have you seen some <laughs> football dads before? <laughs> yeah, a little crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I love I love Tweeter when he's like, uh, I think it's when he steals a cop car and he's trying to convince, oh, yeah. um, trying to convince Moxon to come hmm. join them, and uh, he sings a line from a country song, and he's like, "She broke my heart, so I broke her jaw." <laughs> <laughs> it's like that is just perfect. He's wearing a cowboy hat, and I think he's naked. It's beautiful. Yeah, there, it's a lot of it is kind of um, hints at over the top. But what I like yeah. about it is because it's like Texas and it's Texas football. Mm. It's a world that I don't really understand. So therefore, all of it is kind of believable. It's kind of believable that their teacher is also a stripper. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, for- I can buy it. I forgot about that, but I mean. I watched that movie at a time where I was like, I wonder if any of my teachers are strippers. <laughs> I um, hope none of mine did. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few of ours that I kind of wish to. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's yeah. a great movie. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. I need, I'm need. i due for a rewatch of it, though. Um, what should we? I guess we should talk about the accuracy of the football in it. Oh. And the only thing I can think of is that uh, is when um, Vanderbeek's character, Mox, throws uh the throws the football at the at the uh the mascot yeah. to stop the clock oh, on the yeah. sidelines but he's in the pocket and I don't know that there's a receiver nearby so I think he can get grounding every time for that yeah it hmm. depends when you say he's in the pocket I just imagine that he's in a giant's pocket of course you do he, yeah. of course yeah do. he's in uh, Amy Smart's pocket <laughs> <laughs> you want some cheese with that wine yeah. god <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and I, I really like the football in well, that plus movie. Plus, there are some ridiculously brutal hits that are yeah. just like you know, it, like in three games or like in in one game, like three different times, someone gets like you know, like they get smashed into the air and they fly like over someone and mm-hmm. they get busted in half. What do they they parodied in? Not another team. Not another team. Gets, they did. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I was thinking of uh, uh, Billy Bob, whatever. Uh, with yeah. the concussions until he's dead. Scan my cat. I can play. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. God. And not another team movie. He has like, like they have like 10 concussions left until he's dead. On the scoreboard. Yeah. yeah. And like he like runs into a locker or something and he's like, all right, four concussions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. Stuff. Great movie. Varsity yeah, Blues. Yeah. 1999. Um, you know, I I'm, I hate to jump around on this list, but can we just go to my favorite okay. movie? They can't see it, so. Right. I just don't want to confuse you guys. But I think a good um, contemporary of that movie is Friday Night Lights. Totes. Um, yeah. Which I have stated before, and I'm willing to go on record again as saying it is my favorite uh, – one of, one of my favorite sports movies and my favorite football movie. That's some really high praise. Oh, I know. Yeah. It, and I, I think it's worth it or it's it's due to it because I, uh, and, and I feel I feel bad, I guess, because uh, uh, what was the director's name? Um, uh, Pete Berg, Peter Berg, Peter Berg. Berg yeah, because he's went on to just he's done just he's not. Yeah, he's not as great as I thought he was. Not as great as I thought he was. No, yeah. Battleship, Lone Survivor, which I could not stand. Yeah. Um, but here it, it's collateral just, was good. He didn't direct that. He just acted in it. Um, oh yeah, that's right. That's um, Michael Mann. Michael Mann. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, look that's forward deep. to our fall of man. I'm kidding. Wow, you yeah. said that. I really want. I, I, that's the only reason I would want to do that. But he has a lot of movies. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, Friday Night Lights. It's. It's a lot of. It's, <laughs> are you laughing at the way he said that? The, the emphasis. Friday Night Lights. Friday Night Lights. <laughs> like, <laughs> like when I would spend the night at my dad's on Fridays and I'd get the night light. Exactly. My <laughs> Friday Night Light. That's the only way I pronounce it. Um, oh God. But yeah, so Friday funny. Night Lights. The, it's it, it a lot of a lot can be said about it that's similar to Varsity Blues, but I think it's a much superior movie because I mean it's about f- a high school football in Texas. Where Texas is like football is king. Um, it's about a hor- like a, an incredibly overpaid coach and just the drama of of the of the of the uh, the the teammates and everything. But everything is against this backdrop of this small town Texas life, and it's this un- the undercurrent or the underlying theme of the whole movie is that the like when they. Like I, I think about how people say like, oh yeah, uh, high school is the best four years of my life, and it's like this is that for them. Like this is, 
they have nothing else and like football is their world and it's their ticket out of there like that that scene where i guess mild spoiler alert but one of them one of the players gets injured and they go to the doctor and the doctor tells them that they can't play and it's like he's i think he's a senior in in the movie um it's booby miles um i can't who played him Oh, what is his It wasn't name? Derek Luke, was it? Derek Luke. Derek Luke, yeah. Derek Luke. Um, but, like, there's a scene where he's, like, he's freaking out. He's saying, like, the reason that the doctor is, that the doctor is uh, telling him that is because he's from, like, an, like, a, like a rival's uh, uh, town or something. Um, and, like, the, the doctor is just a complete straight shooter. He's like, no, no, the, you can see the terror there and all that. It's physics. Yeah, and then... <laughs> And then there's a scene where he and his, I think, uncle are in the car after that, and it's or it's after he's he's going and he's getting all of his stuff out of his locker in the locker room. He's like yeah. he's like being like, oh yeah, you know, play good guy, and like he's like putting up a strong face. But then as soon as he gets in the car, he just breaks down and starts crying. It's like, yeah. like because that's that's it. Like he's he had nothing else. Yeah, there, and there's no way for him to get like he's stuck there now. Like it's it's like yeah. he has nothing else to. That's his only outlet for for getting out of that small town, and I, I'm always drawn to those types of movies that show like small small towns and and how you know people can be trapped in them or or something. I guess I mean that's a little crude crude or, or negative, I guess to to say, but it's it's just it's really compelling for me because it's it's such a such a sad kind of viewpoint, I guess. Mm-hmm. And also, yeah. the actual football is pretty cool. Oh, it is, yeah. you, you mentioned that it's the it's the superior one, and I and I'll give you that because that's fair. Because I think it's you know obviously this whole business that we have here is super <laughs> subjective, but right, right. in terms of these two movies, um, I think they're really just two different flavors of the same candy. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, they're they're both they're both dramas. I I think if you're looking for the the teen experience i think you go with varsity blues if you're looking for the uh what do i you know this is my life experience mm-hmm. i think you look for friday night lights yeah friday yeah. night lights is probably a better drama varsity blues is a better comedy yeah yeah and sure. i like i wouldn't fight anyone on on which one's which i personally think that friday night lights is just is just much much better but i mm-hmm. mean if someone says that varsity blues is their favorite football movie then yeah man. Sure. Sure. Cool. Well, it's not my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to interstellar anybody in about it. <laughs> I have a strange relationship with this movie because yeah. it came out in the fall of 2004. That's right. Which uh, it came out, I believe, weeks or months after our football season ended. Mm-hmm. Um, and we lost, um, similar to spoiler alert, oh, the no. main team in the movie. Right. They lose the state championship. We didn't lose the state championship, but we lost to... Uh, a team that had beat us in regionals the year before they beat us in regionals that year so it was, it was just, like i just couldn't i couldn't connect to the movie which i should have should have been all over it mm-hmm. but i couldn't connect to it cuz i was still like really upset <laughs> even weeks or months later that we had lost and i just couldn't i, I just couldn't i just had to push it away cuz i was like no nope, yeah. can't deal with it can't deal but years later right. on matt's recommendation i watched it again and i was like that's yeah. a damn good movie i was upset about that loss too um I wasn't. I, I was I even there. Here. I wasn't. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Matt, do you prefer the movie or the show? Um, you know that's a really? that's a tough question. I, I prefer the movie definitely, I was but say so you think about it. But I'm not gonna say. I think that like Tiny and I have both seen the show co- to completion, but mm-hmm. I think I like the show a lot more than Tiny does. Yeah. Okay. But not as much as the general population likes it because mm. they. love it but i think that that's more like a question of do you like movies or tv better almost because yeah Yeah, sure because i mean the five seasons a sprawling storyline all that stuff but um oh oh my god yeah um my favorite thing about friday night lights the music the music explosions in the sky like they did the score for it and it's from uh they have a few tracks that are that are from their body of work and it's just it works so perfectly well i think uh memorial and a couple other songs of theirs just it play throughout it and oh my god it's just amazing like that there's a final scene of the movie where they're kind of walking along and they're kind of like a couple of the key the key um characters are contemplating about the about their future and all that stuff while uh oh my god i can't i can't remember the song uh i can't remember what song of theirs is playing but it's like 
it's like it's incredibly moving and you feel the emotion and it complements the emotion of the scene so so well um and i just i i love it so much and and it kind of turned me on to uh, explosions in the sky. I think it's the only, only moment we were alone is, is the track. Oh, no, your hand in mine. Sorry. Hmm. Um, explosions in the sky. That's weird because that's not a song by Motion City Soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> or the Fallout Boys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. And, that, and that's also, that's how I find music is I listen, I hear it in movies and I, I find it. Um, yeah. Yeah. This movie is the first time I know Matt and I have talked about this before. Mm -hmm. This is the first time that I really noticed that big, like football, football players, coaches, whatever. They always refer to a football as the football. It's the only one that exists. (laughs) And like, I really noticed it when, um, Tim McGraw McGraw is like going (laughs) off on his son played by Garrett Headland. And he's like, why can you not hold on to the football? Come on, hold on to the football. You can't even hold it on to it now or something like that. And I was like, why, why is he saying that? Like, why, that's the one thing I focused on in that, that very powerful scene with cr- incredible acting. I was like, uh, why does he keep saying the football? There's more there's other ones out there, man. Um, and then I started noticing uh, it like in – like I, I looked, thought back to practices and games and stuff, and I was like, wow, we all say that. Why do we say that? That's so weird. I, I don't understand the confusion. I don't know what you mean. Hmm. Like, when, like not saying like – you can't hold on to a football or you can't hold on to a football. It's like the football. Like it's it's yeah. specific to like the uh, – it's hard to articulate. I understand yeah. it. But, yeah, I, I guess I see. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Let's I talk about know. the let's, – let's talk about fans talking about we and, and our yeah. team, my team. I don't <laughs> – yeah. That one I get more because there's a I sense. get it too because I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> No offense, no offense or anything. Because it's such a regional thing. Like, it's the Indianapolis uh-huh. Colts, the Chicago Bears. Uh-huh. So it's right. like, I'm also from Indianapolis, just like the Colts. So <laughs> right. I feel like they represent sure, me. Sure, sure. And that's something that's that's instilled in you when you play, like, when you're younger. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, our, my coach has always told us, like, you're representing your school when you go and play. Okay, So yeah. be a classy player. Don't, don't. Like be a dirty player. Don't right. you know? Don't be an a hole. Don't don't deflate balls. Don't get arrested for drunk driving. Don't right. uh, <laughs> don't accidentally shoot yourself with the gun in a club in yourself. New York City. Yeah, Plax Cobra. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or okay. if you're Ray Lewis, go ahead and kill somebody. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, fine. Well, know that somebody killed somebody and then hide the evidence and obstruct justice. Yeah, yeah. Third. But anyway, see if being a football fan was more like learning about this stuff, this would be kind of interesting to me. <laughs> hey, there is all kinds of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So look it up. So the most obvious football movie, right, mm-hmm. is Rudy. Oh, Rudy. Yes. How do you guys feel about Rudy? My wife hates it. I told her that we were talking about this when I said I'll probably bring up Rudy, and she goes, "Oh, I hate that movie." <laughs> I have least to say about, it, so I'll just really quickly do this and then overturn it to you guys. I'll, I'll, I'll turn over on down anyway um you'll punt i'll I'll punt it over to you guys there you go he winked, um, he winked, I winked guys a, i he winked, winked a tiny because that's what mm-hmm. a footballer does um anyway so um uh i don't know i don't know this movie that well i just know that john favreau's in it very quickly i think i think he's like it's yeah. isn't he yeah yeah and uh one of the hobbits is in it <laughs> but um i i just remember like seeing bits and pieces of it as a kid and like really like being like really into the whole Rudy, like when they're chanting his name, that iconic sequence. And that's mm-hmm. all I have to say about it, really. I mean, I like the message of the movie, mm-hmm. but I mean, I, I haven't watched it that much. So, so, um, um, Pat McAfee, it over to you guys because he punts stuff. He was on our <laughs> podcast, guys. He was. Yeah, he was. Um, I, this was one of those movies that I waited forever to see. And, you know, people talk about it as one of the greatest sports movies ever. Uh, and so I just kind of blind bought it a couple years ago. And I think I watched it about four years ago. Uh, and I totally bought in. I I didn't want to like it as much as I did. And I was kind of just gripped the entire time. Um, especially that ending. It is, it is as effective as its legacy merits. True. I wish it were true, though. Wish it were more true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's they they play it fast and loose. Yeah, the, yeah. What are the like inconsistencies and, and stuff? What's well, the specifics of it? Uh, Rudy Rudiger was a real person who had a learning disability, who actually attended and graduated from Notre Dame 
university and actually walked on to the football team and actually played. And he got to play in a game, the final regular season game of the year, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the game, they the other players on the team picked him up and carried him off the field. And to this day, he's the only person to ever be carried off the field oh, wow. at Notre Dame Stadium mm -hmm. in South Bend, Indiana. Uh, the thing is... Throughout the movie, he's portrayed as this like the ultimate underdog ever. Yeah, you know, he's like really short, small, but he's and he keeps getting his ass kicked essentially by all these <laughs> some of the best football players in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just keeps getting up, keeps coming back for more. And uh, you know, the whole team's rooting for him to finally dress for the final game because he's been playing for four years and he's never gotten to dress for a game because he's just on the practice squad. Mm -hmm. And you know. Every all all the player the starters all respect him because he's had so so much heart and he's such a great player. Turns out, uh, years ago, uh, I think it was Joe Montana who was like uh, like an under an underclassman when Rudy was there. Mm -hmm. uh, the real Rudy Rudiger was there. Right. Said that uh, basically everyone hated the guy. Really, he, just, he was just way too serious in practice and just like he would like unintentionally hurt people because he was like playing way too hard in practice when they were oh. supposed to be just like doing walkthroughs and stuff mm -hmm. and wow um when they carried him off the field they did it as a joke right it was ironic it was yeah ironic. that's what i heard yeah that's and amazing i don't i don't think that actually i'm almost positive they never like chanted his name like that like rude <laughs> that never happened in the game wow um he did get a sack though that is true oh but yeah. it was, you know, one of the last plays. Like a game. sack of sliders from White Castle? Or... Um, but yeah, so that's <laughs> yep. that's that's the bending of the truth there. Wow. Um, Did Okay, what is the significance of the, the putting the jerseys on the thing? I'm going off That's of... also a fabrication, I believe. Okay. That's not real. Okay. But they also said, you know, that was basically the players saying, if you're not going to dress Rudy because mm -hmm. there's no room on the roster, dress him in my place. Oh, okay. So that's why they were right. putting their jerseys on. I'm just going desk. off of the reference they made to it in the newsroom. Yeah. It's that's one of the best scenes ever in sports. Oh yeah, history like sports movie history, but it's unfortunately not true. Uh, you yeah. clearly haven't seen the uh, whipped cream bikini in Varsity Blues. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, that's one of those we don't really have. This is not the avenue, the the venue to kind of discuss this. Is it okay? Is a movie still good if they play with the truth? Right. Um, it's it's one of the things that's kind of been talked about a lot, especially with this Oscar race that's yeah. coming up, particularly with American Sniper, a little bit with Selma, uh, definitely with Imitation Game, mm -hmm. and uh, and I and I I don't know where I land on it in terms of like, is it okay to to fudge things for the sake of entertainment? You know, with Rudy, with Rudy, I don't care so much. Yeah, yeah. it's it's such a gray area. Yeah, it's all it's it's real. And you're right. This isn't the right the right venue for it. But like, I, I'm reminded of the movie um, Compliance because um, that's a very it, it's it's really random. It's not it's nothing to do with football, obviously. But the movie about um, the guy who called a fast food restaurant and pretended to be a cop to and basically forced the man or co coerced the manager to degrade and humiliate a, an attractive uh, uh, employee. Um, it's all true. It all really happened. Uh, dumbass uh, fast food restaurant manager um, complied with a complete stranger over the phone to strip and search this, this girl. Um, right. But when it's adapted to a movie format, like even though it's true and it's factually accurate, you like – I had the experience of being like, oh, I can't believe this. I like I, in the realm of 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 movies, like even that's too much to take. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if I, I don't know where I'm where I'm going with this to tie it back to football movies and stuff, but I like some thematic elements thrown into movies to make it more movie like in certain um, mm -hmm. certain things. So, I mean, like them chanting. And Rudy if that's and, effectively done, you can you can buy it. Yeah, if it's. Like with with sports movies, they're almost always supposed to be uplifting movies and and stuff like that. So they mm -hmm. kind of follow a formula, and I mean, I don't know. Like if they just showed Rudy as just a little asshole, um, <laughs> right? It would, it would it would go against the point the movie was making. If you don't yeah. make that change, you don't have a movie, really. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, but yeah. I this this movie I saw it when I was when I was younger and I watched it a lot mm -hmm. uh, before I even played football. Um, 
and uh, it, it was one of the deciding factors in my being a Notre Dame fan. Ah, now. Oh, yeah, that's right. You like the Notre Dames. I do. So yes. I was very disappointed years later to learn that it's a pretty glaring fabrication. Right. Oh, well, uh, it could be worse. You could have been a Penn State fan. <laughs> <laughs> very true. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, that's... <laughs> uh, sure. <okay. laughs> Whatever. Well, uh, now that we are on to college football, I will bring up the movie The Program. Oh, nice segue. And Matt's never seen this. Nope. Mike's never even heard of it. Nope. Okay. Uh, this is a movie from the mid-90s. Uh, it is about a college football pr- program at a fictional university, and it's essentially about how this – it's just about what it's like to be – to live the lifestyle of a college football player kind of. Um, it stars uh, – Scott or uh, wow, uh, James Kahn is oh. the head football coach. Um, Omar Epps is in it. Halle Berry is in it. Um Gosh, I can't think of the dude's name who is like the main the quarterback. Um, gosh, I can't think of his name. Uh, he's he's not a very fit, all that famous of an actor, but um, it's just kind of about how like this this quarterback is. He's a junior at this at this college, and he's he's in the running for the Heisman Trophy, which is a pretty big deal. Um, and he's under all this pressure. He's one of the most famous people in the country because he's in the running for the Heisman. But at the same time, he's this, he's just a regular person. He comes from this like really kind of run down industrial town and his father and his brother are alcoholics and they're screw ups and they treat him terribly. And he's kind of heading down the same path. And it's kind of about dealing with that pressure um, that Omar Epps plays a, um, a really unintelligent person who's in, who's an incredible running back. And it's just kind of about him trying to balance his education with football. Um, there's another player who's uh, basically only on the team, or he's only starting on the team because he's taking steroids. Um, it's just a really, it's just a look into college football, and it's 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 kind of cheesy at several points, and there's there's a lot of voiceover like during the football games that looks really bad and doesn't <laughs> doesn't really look that great but um ultimately it's great for just seeing how difficult it can be to be a football player in college because you have to dedicate so much of your time to this thing yet you're just as broke and poor and run down as everybody else because you know they don't pay the players or anything um it's it's just an interesting look at it it's like i said it's a flawed movie there's it's not amazing, but it's I don't know. It, it's really good. It's just a good look at the concept of football. So, huh. yeah, check cool. it out. Interesting. I it think, is obscure. Yeah, I think my brother was a big fan of it. Yeah, uh, yeah. As were most football players at right. our school, I think. Yes. Yeah, they were. Yep. So cool. there's that. Good stuff. Cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah, we'll have to check it out. Um, um. So let's go back a little more to the mainstream uh, and talk about a movie that is about the – something we can all sympathize with, the eternal struggle of the white woman who takes a black woman – a black man, <laughs> a black young man into her house and and the struggle uh, of providing for that young black man. You're talking about – I'm talking the, about, of course, The Blind Side. Yes. Hashtag all white people are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah, For that, which Sandra Bullock won an Academy Award. Right. I have a lot of problems with that movie. Yeah, so do I. Yeah. It is it is perfectly uplifting. And this is if I were talking about if we went back to that conversation about truth and fiction, mm-hmm. uh if this was a complete uh uh fiction, then I wouldn't have such a problem with it. Correct. But uh this is one where Michael Orr, the the actual main character, the the supporting actor in this movie. <laughs> uh, has come out to say that he his portrayal in the movie uh, does not talk enough about the the hard work he had to do um, to get it, to get even get into college. Uh, it, they they really don't. He said this, and they really don't spend enough time talking about what his life was like living in the slums. Um, and it's and it's really kind of sad what they what they do to his story to give to give Sandra Bullock a, another starring vehicle. Mm-hmm. Huh. And I think they were also very unfair, from what I remember, very unfair to his mother, 
because okay. I think she she did have some legal issues, but I think she never spent more than like a month in jail or something. Now, granted, he would have been homeless at that time, and that was good for those people to take him in and everything. But mm-hmm. I think she was she was much more stable than was actually portrayed in the movie. And I gotcha. think I think he actually had much more of a relationship with his biological mother than was was portrayed in the movie. So, gotcha. I, I don't quote me on that, but I think there's something along those lines that, yeah. Yeah, I I I watched this movie once. I think like right after the um, the big Oscar winning stuff. Um, I don't know why I said it like that, but I and it was just really forgettable to me, and yeah. it was just really just. I mean. It made me feel so uncomfortable as as a young white man. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, it, and you know, we make jokes about it, but it is like, I mean, it's just really awkward the way that it's it's portrayed as so self self satisfying and so right. so like, oh, look how great this person's actions were, and it's like like what like what Mike was saying. It's very very limiting to, or it's very um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like very. Narrow minded. Narrow minded, disrespectful to or um it's a little insensitive. Insensitive. Yeah, it's just it's yeah. a bunch of different words to just make a not good feeling. I think that race played a much bigger <laughs> role in the movie than it did in the actual story in real life. Probably yes. I have a feeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah. uh, the first time kinda to counter you, Matt, the first time I saw it I liked it a lot. Really? Like I, you know, I kind of said that earlier, and I and I enjoyed it a lot, especially the scene early on where they talk about his protective instincts. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um. And he, you know, he puts his hand on the thing when they get in the accident. I thought that was pretty. It was pretty sweet. Yeah. Okay. And I think that was also a bit of a stretch in the movie too. He said, that he, "I'm sure." Yeah. He knew a lot more about football than they portrayed him mm-hmm. in the movie. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, and also, yeah. um, I think the the Oscars helped out this movie a ton. Um, so I think, I think the reason why people love the movie so much and why Sandra Bullock won an Oscar is because people just love Sandra Bullock. (laughs) I love her to death. She's terrific. Um, and I think most people do. And they were like, you know what? She was really good in this. So we're just going to give her an Oscar. Probably. Um, And I I think I actually talked to my dad about, I remember when this came out, my dad had like the best way to say it. He was like, she was really good, but she wasn't exceptional. Ah. And Hmm. There were some other exceptional performances yeah. that year, so yeah, I wouldn't necessarily take it away from her, but it's just it's disappointing that the politics and stuff played so much of a role in her getting it. Right. Agreed. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Um, white people love Sandra Bullock. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they and, do. And white people are great, right? <laughs> That's the underlying really, message of they the work really side. hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, God. Ah, oh, that left such a bad taste in my mouth, that movie. Um, moving on to the next movie. Um, this one I'm excited about. I think I may have moved it on you guys. But um, remember the Titans. <laughs> it, it, uh, it's about, you know, also, oddly enough, the, the way that, wow, that was unintentional. It has very strong racial stuff about it. It's, yeah. Um, and a newly segregated school, football team, all that stuff. Desegregated school. Desegregated, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> Crap. Um, <laughs> in a newly deseg- desegregated school, uh, a young footballing coach, um, <laughs> played by Denzel, yes, is in charge of keeping them, uh, you know, from hurting each other. Yeah, and to mm-hmm. to become a team. Right. And it's based on a true story. And I I watched it again, like maybe two years ago. And I may have talked about it previously on the podcast episodes and episodes and episodes ago but the diminishing i felt like a very steep uh decline in terms of how much i liked it now versus back in like high school huh yeah it just felt like really like really disney disney uh Really? Oh, it's hammy. Yeah, re- yeah. hammy. It's hammy. Perfect. That's the perfect way to say it. It's a very ha- hammy, kind of heavy-handed message movie from Disney. Yeah, and it's just and that kind of just turned me away from it, because um, mm-hmm. it's 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 really really kind of just like oh this is very ham-fisted stuff, and mm-hmm. I, I like the I, I like the interplay between the players and stuff. Um, 
I think there's a lot of good stuff there, but I just think overall the overall packaging is a little too a little too like okay, this is how you feel now. Feel this for this for this story. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. How do you guys feel about it? I I appreciate how it addressed the fact that that I think I think sports in real life was actually somewhat of a vehicle for transcending racism in the United States. Because mm-hmm. I mean, you, you look at what you know what Jackie Robinson did. Mm-hmm. Um, that was huge, and I, I don't obviously that didn't end racism, but um, I don't, baseball wasn't isn't has never been as big in the South, I don't think, um, and so it didn't have quite the effect there. But I think around the rest of the country, I think it made a bit of a difference. Um, Absolutely, you know, don't quote me on that, but but you know, it's the same for other sports too. I think people are like, well, you know, they're incredible athletes. So I don't know. I, I'm kind of choking on this, but um, <laughs> I, I appreciate the fact that it addressed that. And this is a true story that actually demonstrates that this can actually happen and that mm-hmm. this actually did happen back in the day. Um, you know, it doesn't solve anything really, but it kind of helps bring people together, I guess. Yeah. But that's about all I can really appreciate about it. <laughs> uh, I love Denzel in it. Denzel's yeah. awesome. Uh-huh. Um, there's also some other good acting in it, but. Overall, it's... Yeah. And for our listeners, I'm aware that it's called Remember the Titans. I'm just being a dick. <laughs> Mike, what did you think of, of the movie? Yeah, I, I kind of agree with, with everything both of you guys said. I, I would maybe give it a little more credit in that since we know it's a Disney movie, we can almost kind of expect the hamminess. And, okay. Um, it's, it's, we celebrate movies that kind of make us think about ourselves uh, and, and try to be better right like to kind of expose what's wrong with us i think of course if we're talking about race i'm talking about selma most recently and how uh how while that movie felt timely it's really pretty timeless considering there's voter problems going on today um but the thing about Rem- remember the titans is that i like that it paints a picture of what can be if we all just tried hard enough yeah so while I agree, I, I don't think it's the best movie ever. I think it's right. I think it's a long way off from uh, even one of the best um, sports movies, despite what every high school teacher thinks, because um, they show it in class all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, but but I think there's I think Remember the Titans serves a purpose. It's it's absolutely okay. worth watching. Watching. I think, and and I might stumble over my words here because this is kind of a just partially thought thing but i think that it presents kind of an idealistic version um or an idealistic memory of a time and it 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 creates this kind it tries to create this feeling instead of showing like a more a more historically kind of kind of resonant kind of thing like like it's it's they focus on a happy story amongst thousands of depressing ones yeah yeah they focus on they focus on a happy story and put a happy slant on it and it's in this it's in this time period that is just historically just horrific right um and they they play with it a little bit in a disney kind of way like the like they have um like people like i think throw throw a brick through denzel's window or something like that or or they have like kind of this this like like one of the kid one of the kids in school is getting getting teased or something and one of the other ones uh um um backs them up and all that and it's this big bonding thing but it's it's just I think what rubs me the wrong way is it's it's not it's a Disney version of this historical time and it's not a very accurate vision of it from from what I've from from what I've seen or yeah I'm aware of mm-hmm. I didn't see and, it I wasn't alive and when I say it serves a purpose though I, I think of like the kids that go to my high school Boonville High School um, they need to see a movie like this that is that is tame that is family friendly and also shows what it what it can be like Mm -hmm. you're absolutely right yeah i yeah and and kids kids and 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 pupils need to need to need to know about it i mean it's just it's the knowing about it kind of takes away some of its enjoyment for me because it kind of takes me out of the movie a little bit yeah it's not a bad movie by any means and 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 i do enjoy the movie i just think it's a little feels a little much at times Mm-hmm. But yeah, again, it's like feel it's good. yeah, it's a feel good movie, and sometimes you need that, and mm-hmm. and and I'm not taking away anything from it at all. Yeah, love Denzel. Yeah, he's just the best. Also, Opie from Sons of. <laughs> 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 
Um, <laughs> Gary Bertier. There you go. That's the character. I, don't yeah. know, I can't remember the actor's name. Yeah, I can't either. Yeah. Anyways. Um, anyway. So we we've we've dogged on some movies a little bit recently, <laughs> um, but I, I think I would like to talk about. Um, one that despite the odds against it, we all kind of liked, and we'll talk about it briefly because we talked about it during the Adam Sandler episode, but, uh, the longest yard yeah, is probably, I mean, if we look back, I know I said Spanglish was my favorite Adam Sandler, but longest yard has to be top three. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I liked it. I liked it. Do you remember what some, what were some of the things we said about that? I was so drunk. (laughs) Um, no, I really, I, I, I remember making a, a smart ass comment about the McDonald's thing that's buried with the guy that dies. Yeah. And then you guys saying yeah. like, Oh, they don't decompose. And I was like, Oh, f-. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the extent of my, rem- my, my memory of it. I think gotcha. we said something along the lines of it's a very silly movie, Yeah, but yeah. It, it has, it reaches a pretty sincere level of like heartfelt camaraderie and sportsmanship yeah. and stuff like that. And, that's kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's I think we also said um, it was kind of fortunate that it it was almost like MTV had their hands on it a little more than Adam Sandler did. Yes, yeah, that's right. And we kind of benefited from that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it it really tapped into the kind of camaraderie spirit of sports movies in a way that was unique because I mean it's in prison, um, mm-hmm. and I don't think any of us have seen the original with Burt Reynolds, have we? Mm-mm. No. Yeah, me me neither. Um football movies too. Um <laughs> <laughs> No, uh but I I liked I liked it. Uh I thought it was thought it was pretty good. Yeah. 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 Good. It's m- memorable. Yeah. Worth watching if you're going to if you're going to watch some Adam Sandler movies, I guess. Right. When you uh Mike when you said uh despite the odds against it, I thought you were going to bring up uh the movie Invincible because, mm-hmm. you know, he had odds stacked against him. Uh huh. Have yeah. you, Matt? Have you seen this movie? Because we can talk about this. Um, is the based on uh, the Robert Kirkman graphic novels? <laughs> just <laughs> I wish. kidding. Um, I wish. <laughs> uh, just kidding. No, I haven't seen it. Uh, the Marky Mark, uh, the, the New Kids on the Block football <laughs> movie. movie. Yeah. Uh-huh. I've I've seen the gang. The gang. Uh, gang gets invincible. Episode of um, It's Always Sunny. Yeah, that, that was but, so yeah. funny. Yeah. Go ahead and talk about Invincible though. Cause I've I've never seen it. Sell me on Invincible. Oh man, I don't know if I can do that. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll try my best. It has been a while since I've seen it, but I remember okay. loving this movie to death when I first saw it. I think it came out in '06. Is it also a Disney movie? Also a Disney movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the true story of Vince Papali, played by uh, Mark Wahlberg, as you said, mm-hmm. and it's just kind of uh, it, it's the story of this really super rare thing that happens when a team. Uh, kind of holds an open tryout, which is which is incredibly rare. I mean, what like ninety percent of the players uh, that are in the NFL are drafted or college players that are undrafted, but mm-hmm. shortly after. Yeah, um, it doesn't. And happen so, anymore. <laughs> what's that? It doesn't happen anymore. It, I mean, it, yeah, not at all. I mean, I don't think there are any teams, at least in football, that have uh, open tryouts. Yeah. Uh, and in 1976, Vince Papali tried out for the Philadelphia Eagles, and it's just basically about him going through training camp and um you know he played the preseason games and uh they they ended up picking him up and and he got to play with the eagles and it's it's um i guess because it doesn't have to work as hard with the race thing it's Mm -hmm. i think it's a more effective feel-good football movie even than remember the titans because it's 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 the story of one man and um it, it's weird because I saw it when I was 18 or 19, and mm-hmm. so you don't really connect with a with a 30 year old bartender who is trying out. But you you can kind of get the struggle. I just imagine Invincible is the type of movie that I that I'll like that I'll continue to like later on. That despite the odds, despite my age, if I try hard enough, hmm. you know, hmm. that'll be. Uh, I'm gonna definitely see this because it it'll be interesting to to see it from. I mean, I'm almost 30. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a footballer. Mm-hmm. Um, but you could be. I no. Nope. <laughs> nope. You could be. It's. Uh, I thought the movie was pretty cheesy, but but in an okay way, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they had to stretch for a lot of this movie too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's. I would have chosen someone other than Mark Wahlberg. Um, <laughs> you however, can pretty much always say that. Though. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, 
on the other hand, Greg Kinnear elevated the crap out of this movie as the head yeah. coach of the Eagles. I don't recall his name. Um, I love Greg Kinnear. I think he can elevate just about anything. He's a little Dick un- Vermeil, by the way. Dick for thank you. Yeah, mm-hmm. Dick Vermeil. So yeah, I yeah, it's a movie that ha- that happened that came out. Did Greg? Kin- <laughs> you said Greg Kinnear, right? Yeah. Did he yeah. elevate uh, Heaven Is for Real? Yeah. Oh, that movie should have been. Awful. Did he? But it was just pretty bad. Did 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 uh did the movie's quality rise? Did it did, did it, it take a did it ascend stairway to, to heaven? Yeah. Oh boy, you're uh, you're reaching here. <laughs> <laughs> reaching like anyway. Stop. Um, stop. Yeah. So Invincible. I have to I have to see it. So we have one more movie on our list, guys. Do we, we, do we do you want to talk about it? Do yeah. Uh, any given Sunday. Oh yeah. Uh, did we talk about that recently on the podcast or in the pod chat? Pod chat. Yeah, because yes. I think I made a dig about Cameron Diaz being like uh, uh, something. I don't know. Yeah. No. It's because I mentioned. A good that. actress. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. hit the table. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, yeah, any given Sunday. Um, Oliver Stone movie. Mm-hmm. So for me, that's automatically a grain of salt because I just have no idea if I'm going to actually like it. Because <laughs> some of his movies, it's just like, I, why? What was that compared to what you did last <laughs> time? I, yeah. It's weird. Um. Well, so, JFK didn't get shot in this one. True, true. Um, but some of the uniforms did in this. One of the classic, yeah. one of the classic uh, uh, digs at the movie is there's like because it's, it's it's basically the NFL. Okay, it's professional right. football. Yeah, they couldn't get the rights to to yeah. use the NFL in it, so it's a fictionalized. It's remote. all fictional, and there's like, <laughs> oh man, I think I don't know. There was one that was like, um, that one of them were like the Crusaders. And they had like these huge iron crosses on their uniforms. <laughs> I don't remember if they were actually called the Crusaders, but they looked like they looked huh. like Crusader crosses from like wow. the medieval Crusades. Yeah, uh, Knights Templar crosses. That's what it looked like. What um, the hell, it was stone. <laughs> it was disgusting. It looked horrible. <laughs> um, there was never the like the the scores in the games mm. would just jump. Like they wouldn't show the 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 touchdowns or anything. Wow! Like he just cut to like the fourth quarter and like they're down. It's like what the hell is? It was just weird. Um, yeah, we get it. Football is not your concern with this movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, this is I think one of the first Radar movies I ever got to see though, so I kind of liked it oh. a lot when I was a kid. Yeah, me too. And I remember thinking like when they early on, not early on, maybe halfway through the movie, when they're at a party and some dude is banging some girl uh, on a table. Yeah, is what I'm talking about. Yes. I'm I remember, I remember that being a lot more graphic than it was when I saw that movie <laughs> later on. Yeah, by today. You know, doing that when you were younger, when you would see like just a snippet of a sex scene, and then you would, it would just kind of like grow exponentially in your mind over time. Right. Yes. And then when you see it later on, and you're like, oh, jeez. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. Yep. All too That's well. Exactly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know. That is. Exactly what happened with that movie. And unfortunately, that and uh, Jamie Foxx's backflip is about all I can remember of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a, it's, a, it's a good enough movie, you know. Yeah. Um, Cameron Diaz is in it. <laughs> Cameron Diaz, f- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but Cameron Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that movie. <laughs> oh, I love that movie. So funny. God, um, I love it. Yeah, it's an okay movie. I mean, yeah. don't hear it talked about that much. Yeah, it's oh, not really. Yeah. And one of the team's name was Sharks. The Sharks, That's yeah, the, the main, the uh, the main team. Chino's team. The Sharks played the Jets. I guess I don't know. <laughs> Get it? <See? laughs> hey, hey. I don't know the footballs. Yeah. It's a modern retelling. <laughs> yep. <laughs> of yep. the West Side Story. Yeah. God. <laughs> um, um. But yeah, it's a movie. Yeah. I mean, it's worth a watch. It's definitely worth a watch. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, we didn't even mention uh, throughout throughout this entire discussion. I don't think we even mentioned that the reason that we're doing this is because of the Super Bowl is the Sunday. I think we did. <laughs> did we? we, we did. Did. Yeah, because yeah. I mentioned I was I was a dick and I was like I'm gonna go see a movie. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, did you guys see the um uh the bad lip reading? Uh, I haven't seen it yet. NFL yeah, it's the 2015. So funny. I haven't seen yes. it yet. Yeah. Um, I'll put the link in the show notes. Um, what about, and these are ones I haven't seen, but I feel like okay. we should just touch on them. Uh, the replacements. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was supposed yeah. to be pretty good, right? That was good. <laughs> I, I, I never saw Keanu. it. Keanu. Keanu. Um, um, oh, who's the, who's the coach in that? Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah. I remember liking that movie a lot. It was fun. Um, More like Gene Whackman, because that dude is whack. Hey, he's really that's good. hilarious. Uh. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that movie was, f- I bought that for $4, which is rare. Yeah. Huh. New for $4. Oh, I nice. remember there was a $5 bin and then the replacements was $4. Nice. nice. We are Marshall. Did you guys see that one movie? Oh yeah. I did. Uh, with, with Maddie Fox. As, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and a, and a, and a up and comer named Matthew McConaughey. Oh who yeah. Was still Maddie overacting Mac. a little bit in that movie. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That was before the McConaissance. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, I, I remember liking it. I don't. I didn't retain much information for, or much of it. So. I remember watching it, and I remember watching it and thinking, I hope Anthony Mackie gets something good to do at some point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because he's been in some. Oh, he's stuff. awesome. He's great. I, I'm so. Yeah, I'm, he is. Yeah. Love him. Yeah. yeah. The Express. Never saw. What is didn't that about? See that one either. The Ernie Davis story. I don't know. Dennis Quaid's in it. I know very little about it. Yeah. I never saw. Okay. That. Did you guys see Gridiron Gang? With Dwayne the Rock Johnson, I did. No. It's so forgettable. Isn't is that really? is that another yeah. Disney movie? Mm, I, don't uh, know. I don't think so. Okay. Exhibit isn't it? Game Plan. Oh, the wow. Game Plan is a Disney movie starring the Rock. Okay. Yeah, nope, got nothing. Mm. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Any others? Not um, the garbage picking, field goal kicking, Philadelphia phenomenon, huh. starring Tony Danza. Is that the actual uh, title of the movie? That is the actual title. You guys never saw that? I think it what was a straight the hell? two. It was a TV movie. Say that title one more one more time. <laughs> the gara- the garbage picking, field goal kicking, Philadelphia phenomenon. Jesus. Holy crap. Yeah, dude. How did that Check get it. past the producer? I don't know. <laughs> Tony Danza, probably. Wow. <laughs> uh Radio? I've never seen Radio. Oh, Radio's a good movie. I've heard that that's really good. A little cheesy. Yeah. yeah, I've heard it's good. I think I'm confusing it with pirate radio. <laughs> Airbud Golden Receiver. <laughs> I I want to see that. I I I don't I've know. I've seen it. I have. You have? Yeah. How is it? It is not good. <laughs> no, it's not good. I liked. Um, like I had this whole stupid idea when I when I first started the website. I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna review every um. Uh, what are, what are they even called now? You just said them. Um, Airbud Air movies. Airbud movie. Yeah, I'm gonna review all the Airbud movies, and I never got to one of them. Yep, that's um, not terrible. No, <laughs> it's that's not the worst thing. Yeah, <laughs> of all the things I give up on, that's a good one. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Brian's song. Oh, never, yeah. I'm scared to watch that. Uh, me too. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen it. Uh, and then finally. Unless you guys have something else to add, um, I, I've never seen Big Fan with Patton Oswalt, but I really oh, want to. Man, I forgot about that. I sh- I would have brought it up. Uh, that's a really good movie. Yeah, it is. Yeah, um, yeah. It's 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 really interesting to see. It's depressing as hell uh-huh. to because uh-huh. and and Patton Oswalt just sells that role so well. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, it's it's just kind of a small little movie, but. And I mean that ending is just so it. I, I I think at the time I was disappointed with the way that it it unfolded. I'm I'm being vague on purpose, obviously, because I don't want to spoil it. Yeah. But with time, it's like that. It makes a lot of sense. the The movie makes a lot of sense to me, and I really liked it. Tiny, what did you think of it? Yeah, it was really good. Kind of, it was really, really hinged on Patton Oswalt's performance. I think that was yeah. that was almost the bigger story of the movie was his him being so dramatically um, convincing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's even, that's being too vague. He was, he was just very good in it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Good movie. Yeah. Cool. Also, there's a movie in the eighties, one of Tom Cruise's first movies, all the right moves. Oh yeah. Oh, decent yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then another thing of ba- that... kind of balancing sports with your life sort of. I'm going to say something. I think I'm going to say something stupid. That's not a Scorsese movie, is it? I don't know. I don't think so. No, you're thinking, you might be thinking of the color of money. Maybe, mm-hmm. which is also Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Color of Money. Yeah, Color of Money is, is yes. Sequel to the the, the, the Color Purple Hustler. The the Hustler. <laughs> God damn it, Matt. The Hustler. What'd you yes. say? The Color Purple. Color, color Purple. purple. <laughs> no. <laughs> Incorrect. God. Uh, anyways, um, all right. So 
now we're gonna now we're gonna go on to potpourri, which if you this is your first time listening to us, this is our section of the episode where we basically talk about anything we've been watching, looking forward to, into recently, movie and TV related, anything we want as long as it smells good. And um, let's go with Mike. What what have you been watching lately? Um, I feel like I've brought this up on the podcast before, but I I need to mention it because uh, next week Parenthood is airing its last. Well, I whenever this airs tomorrow this week. Uh, Parenthood is airing their final episode. Oh, wow. And just for one last chance, I, I need to tell you guys to watch this show. Please watch this show. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be... I, I Like, it's not going to be the end of Breaking Bad, where if you find out the end of Breaking Bad, you're not going to want to go back and watch the show, which I would argue with anyway. I still think you need to experience Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but parenthood is so good it's such an amazing family show um and it and it makes you wish that your family was as awesome as this family and your the the patriarch of your family was as cool um as zeke braverman <laughs> which is just not possible it's it's fiction but right. um jason Catims, you said people love uh, Friday Night Lights. I watched a couple episodes of Friday Night Lights, but I am now fully bought into whatever he does because of mm-hmm. Parenthood. It's nice. it's it's just a perfect show. Nice. Um, it it got a little slow in the middle, and there are some things. I mean, there are some criticisms of it where they'll they'll kind of drop a storyline, or for this reason or whatever, a character will kind of go away for a long time. But they. More consistently than any show I can think of, they nail a landing and they nail the human family experience in ways that I can't even think of on other TV shows. When You know how when you think – when you watch a scene and a character is reacting one way or they're about to say something and you say, gee – I hope they react this way because that's the real way somebody would react. Mm-hmm. Well, they do that in parenthood more often than not. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Does that oh, make yeah, sense? Definitely. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just such an effective family show. I can see someone not being there like in, in their time to- in the in the right time of life for this kind of show. Right. But even then, I think there are still things worth seeing about it. Um, I mean, if anything, see it see it for uh, uh, Zeke Braverman, um, Craig T. Nelson, of course, and Peter Krause. Nice. But I mean, they're the the relationships with with brothers are amazing. Uh, they deal with um, one of one of the children has Aspergers, and they deal with that. Huh. They uh, um, they they deal with like you know fulfilling your dreams and being a screw up and and just hmm. all that stuff that that happens to families. They they deal with so well, so perfectly, succinctly at times, but. Um, it's just a really great show, and, and if I had to point to one scene, I I highly recommend that you YouTube um, when um, uh, Amber, played by Mae Whitman, gets in a car accident, and and yeah. Zeke kind of scolds her about it. Yeah, you mentioned that in the uh, the TV dialogue episode. TV dialogue episode. Yeah I, yeah, I still stand by that. I I highly recommend you watch it, if at least for that second season, I think. But nice. please, please, it's about to end this week, so you, there's no way, listeners, there's no way you'll catch up uh, right. before whenever this air before tomorrow. But uh, do check it out. You you won't regret it. Nice. Yeah, I'm I'm still like <laughs> when we talked about. Um, when we talked about favorite um, uh, TV dialogue, I like you sold me on it so hard, and you're like, "Yeah, it's about to end." And I'm thinking, like, "Oh, okay. Well, it's gonna be over like in in the spring. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll be able to like really go go for it." And then everyone was like, "Oh, it's ending in in January." I'm like, "Oh, crap." Huh. Yeah. So I think I think I'll yep. go ahead Shorten and shorten season. Yeah, I'll, I'll say right now when the last season hits Netflix is when I'll I'll binge watch the whole show. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It's towards the top Sweet. of my queue on Netflix. Mine too. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Speaking yeah. of Netflix. Ooh, nice segue. Mm-hmm. Segue. Uh, I believe last time, maybe the time before, I reported on the show Orange is the New Black that I was watching it. Orange is the New Blacks? I finished the first season. <gasps> uh, so I think I can give a little bit of an opinion on, on my feel of the show. Um, it's good. Nice. <laughs> so, Mike, what do you got? <laughs> I'm kidding. No, uh, it's it's pretty good. I think it's overrated. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and I, I think I know why. I think it's because one of the things that the show does remarkably well is that it blends in kind of the like a like kind of a powerful message of like acceptance of different lifestyles, mm-hmm. mo- most notably uh, lesbianism <laughs> ah. uh, and stuff like that. And, and just kind of gender identity and stuff like that. Um, it blends that so well to where that's not like heavy handed or like um, hitting you over the head with it, that it's just really refreshing. Um, it's really nice to see. Nice. Uh, that's, so that, that's, that's really good. I think that's why so many people are like, this is a great show. It's one of the best shows on the air right now. Um, so there's that. And I, I, I respect the hell out of the show for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I I think it's a little too. Um, I, I think it's like a show that hipsters like. Oh really? I don't know. Just because it's like, I <laughs> it's don't know. It's trendy. It's it's just so trendy and okay. And you know, um, the the creator is uh, Genji Kohan, who also created the show Weeds, and that's kind of how I felt about Weeds too. Mm-hmm. Like, um, it was, you know, it was kind of playing on the 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 idea. Or just it, it it relied too heavily on the idea of a housewife becoming a drug dealer, yeah. And like you can only get so much out of that concept, and they just went way too long with it. Like you could have done four good seasons, maybe five, but I think it's I don't know if it's still on the air. Weeds, no, Weeds, it ended. no, it ended. But it had like eight or nine seasons, way too many. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just have a feeling that Orange is the New Black is heading down that same road. Like it's cool and trendy mm. and. There's reasons why it's fun, but I think they're just gonna they're just gonna run out of steam really fast with it. Okay. Um, but it's it's definitely good. It's it's I, I'm not saying it's a bad show by any means. Mm-hmm. Um, at least not yet. Uh, so yeah, check it out. It's good. The, the acting is phenomenal on it. Nice. Everyone is just terrific. Um, do you think I should do an episode by episode review on Obsessive Viewer? No, you don't think so, really? No. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I never think you should do that. <laughs> well, I have, I have, I have notes on Evernote for each ever each episode. I was really bored at work one day, <laughs> so <laughs> so I'm gonna do it. Okay. I just need to find the time. Okay. Um, have you watched the show? No, I just plan on watching it. And you yeah. have notes for each one, and you haven't watched it yet. I, I have, I have notes set up for each one. A blank file. You're a, a master. Blank file. <laughs> You're not. I am a bored security guard. <laughs> um, but. I'm not going to be able to watch it anytime soon because on Netflix, segue, oh. I posted something on my Facebook and I, and I said this to you guys. I said something to you guys in the pod chat. On Facebook, I said, episode two of Black Mirror is the best dystopian future movie I've ever seen and I'm only halfway through it. <laughs> Black <laughs> Mirror is like a modern kind of, kind of Twilight Zone-esque anthology sci-fi horror not horror but mostly sci-fi series that each episode is a is a contained story and each one is different from from the other one so episode one i've only seen two episodes again and i I talked about this before we before we recorded i've been so busy this weekend and all i've wanted to do and i I mean i had such a good time hanging out with my friends and all that but i'm like i have like like I want to watch Black Mirror and I want to finish reading The Martian, <laughs> um, and I just don't have the time. But Black Mirror, I, I only watched two episodes. The first episode is so, it's so interesting to me that, and I was thinking about how to how to how to describe it. Um, I'm not going to give away what it is, but basically the first episode is about the Prime Minister of England or whatever. <laughs> um, uh, not America, so it doesn't whatever. matter, or whatever. It's not America, so it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> no, the prime minister, he gets it like it. They um, uh, they get a recorded video of uh, uh, the princess of one of the places in in England, um, like a duchess or something. Yeah, a duchess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she's been kidnapped and she's being held hostage, and they give the prime minister a specific demand, and it it's. It's a very suspenseful, intense episode, and and the thing that kind of unifies everything in 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 the show is technology, and mm-hmm. it's about how technology is kind of controlling our lives. And each episode of the two that I've seen are is very reflective of that. And I actually found out um, 
from a friend of mine that the reason that it's called Black Mirror is because like if you're if you're looking at your phone and the screen goes off, you see your reflection in the black screen. That's it's a mm. black mirror. Interesting. Um, and it, and it's it it plays with its themes so incredibly well. And that that second episode, oh my god, uh-huh. it's it's like the second episode is is all takes place in this kind of game show kind of kind of life prison kind of thing where these people are all surrounded by. Um, they're all in this game and it's like a, it's like a society where they're they're all like kind of um they're exercising to get points they're they're using points to get food and they're 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 they have to look at ads and and while they look for entertainment and st- it's it's such a such a bizarro world that's so so closely tethered like it's so closely um reflective of of the world that we live in with like facebook and social media and all mm-hmm. that stuff and there's such a beautiful, beautiful story of humans interacting within that, and it it goes to a place that's so just. I don't know how to describe it other than it's just such. It it really messed with my mind, um, and I, I I thought about it for about thirty six hours after I saw that episode, um, and it, it was just so so incredibly effective. And I I urge you guys to just the next thing you watch on Netflix, make it Black Mirror because it's so so good. Is it a mini series or is it an ongoing series? It's a British series. It's like uh, three episodes per season. Uh, How many seasons so far? Two plus a Christmas okay. special that I don't think is on Netflix. Okay, um, but I guess the third episode, <laughs> the premise of the third episode is something along the lines of everyone on Earth has access to everyone else's entire memories hmm. just like complete like that you can look and see what what people remember at any given time hmm. uh so i think that'll be an interesting uh thing it stars it stars toby kebble doesn't it um or is he in one of the episodes i don't know they have different oh. casts for different oh, episodes, do they? I think. Okay. yeah okay. Okay. um I'm interested in it. Yeah, it's it, seriously, and I don't I don't say this lightly, and this isn't me being like Matt Hurt, um, <laughs> but like I'm I'm urging you guys like make like next time you're looking for something on Netflix, make it Black Mirror because nice. it's I'm I'm so already just so in love with the show, hmm. and like I've already thought like okay I'm gonna watch it and then I'm gonna watch it again and review every episode because it there's so it's so dense with just things that it makes you think about things in a way that and see things in a way that you wouldn't normally think about because it's mm-hmm. so it's so technology is so ingrained in our lives i mean you if you're listening to this right now and you're doing like podcasts are a passive thing you're doing something just you know whatever and it's you don't even really think about it like you have something in your ears and you're closing yourself off to the world it's that second episode though if 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 you only watch one episode, watch that second episode just so you can tell me about it. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's my potpourri. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, cool. Hey, anything else? No, I haven't been yeah. watching much, especially since last week. I, yeah, I haven't been able to watch anything either. Stupid busy. Yeah, me too. God, yeah. Like in uh, oh uh, uh, the the Martian. I mentioned that in passing before we got started. I because. And I said this before, and I'll just say it really quickly again for our listeners. Um, at work, I had 24 pages left in the in the Martian, which is a really good book. And then I had a half an hour before work, so I decided not to not to finish it until after work. But after work, I had to go go home, get ready, drive to Dayton, see my friends, which was awesome. And I came home, and then immediately got on uh, the Cinema Rolls podcast, which you can find at uh, cinemarollspodcast.com, and. Then now we're recording this, so I have 24 pages left of the of the Martian, and I'm so like I haven't had any time to to read it, and I'm I'm just really excited about it. But it's being adapted to a movie uh, directed by Ridley Scott. Uh, the movie is about a guy on a Mars mission, a manned Mars mission, who gets left behind, thought that he's dead, and he's it's basically he, him him with all the equipment that was left from the mission, and him. Tr- trying to survive with that and it's so incredibly compelling and thrilling and exciting and it's being adapted by Ridley Scott written by Drew Goddard who I love as a writer starring uh, Matt Damon um, mm. I think they have the mixture of talent there and the source material is really could be really really good and it's also but um, but it's also tricky because it's 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 really hard to say how they'll adapt it because I mean, for as much as I love the book, it's also 
the main character is kind of a little underdeveloped. I, it's a, mm. it's a lot of him being like him being very, um, um, uh, ingenious or, or <laughs> it's all about his ingenuity uh-huh. and, and his, 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 uh, him working to survive the, this, this condition, but kind not of in the moment. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's, it's hilarious also. Like there's a lot of really good dr- comic relief, but there's not a lot of his, like, like him missing, like his, his family and, and mm-hmm. stuff like, like there, you don't really get like a full fleshed character out He's of just him. kind of narrow. Kind of, kind yeah. of, and I mean, I feel like that's a disservice to it, but I, that's that's also kind of how how it is. But, yeah. um, but it's it's really it's with its faults, it's it's a really good book, and I'm really excited to see what Ridley Scott does does with it. Nice, um, yeah. And I love when Ridley Scott does sci-fi. I mean, come on, yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. So cool. that about does it for us, guys. Um, I'm going to throw it to the pre-recorded outros. I want to just say again, uh, check out Cinema Rolls podcast. They're, they're a great couple of guys, uh, Matt and Alex. Um, I was so happy to be on the show. Um, and also they, uh, they, we, we did Skype, a video Skype call. And I realized like midway through the recording that, um, I'm in my, I'm in my brother's sunroom and when they have a bunch of the turbo roo stuff like that i'm like sitting there thinking like i wonder if they notice that i'm just sitting in a room with a bunch of pictures clearly drawn by by young kids of, of a disabled dog <laughs> that's kind of a weird thing a little random yeah and i didn't reference it at all or anything like that <laughs> so matt and alex if you're listening to this uh that's why um yeah that's about does it for us thanks for listening guys thanks, thanks guys, guys. Um, that movie, yeah. by the way, uh, Heaven Can Wait, is not one that I can talk about because I am more familiar with Down to Earth, the <laughs> the Chris Rock remake of Heaven Can Wait, Wait which what? is not about football. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Heaven is for real, you mean? He- oh, Heaven, Heaven is, is for real. real. Oh, yeah. Because I, I was going with the football. Heaven Can Wait, oh. right? It's a football movie. What I I don't I'm not familiar with yeah, either. Oh, you guys have never seen Heaven Can Wait? No. no. Or never heard of <laughs> Heaven Can Wait? <laughs> uh, Heaven Can Wait is about a guy who dies, uh, but the 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 angel uh, says that it was an accident. He wasn't he wasn't supposed to die yet, so he they put him in the body of someone else. And he's a football player, but he's in the huh. body of of someone else uh, who doesn't play football. So he's just trying to get his life back and, huh. and play football hmm. again. Um, wow. It was remade in the 90s, uh, I don't know, 99, 2000, <laughs> 2001, uh, starring Chris Rock as a comedian who dies ah. and comes back as an old white man. <laughs> I remember that movie, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Take a take a take a woods, y'all. What's that movie called? <laughs> Down, Down to Earth? Earth is the Chris Down Rock to movie. Earth. Oh, God. Huh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. As always, thank you for listening to the Obsessive Viewer Podcast. Thank you to Loud Like for providing our awesome opening theme music. Their first EP is called Mistakes We Must Make and features our theme song and Eclipse of Events. Please head over to iTunes and download their album. While you're there, make sure to give us a rate and a review. It helps us climb the podcast charts and we really appreciate feedback. Speaking of feedback, please like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash theobsessiveviewer and follow each of us on Twitter. You can find me, Tiny, at Obsessive Tiny, Matt is at Obsessive Viewer, and Mike is at I am Mike White. You can also check out the blog at obsessiveviewer.com, where we, but mostly Matt, review movies, TV shows, and comment on the industry as a whole. While you're web surfing, please head over to our sister site, obsessivebooknerd.com, where we review books and comment on the ever evolving world of reading. If you're philosophically curious, please go explore my side project, The Secular Perspective Podcast, which is a show that explores the concept of faith, religion, and existence from a secular perspective. If you have any thoughts on the podcast or suggestions for future episodes, you can also email us individually at matt, tiny, or mike at obsessiveviewer.com, or email the podcast directly at podcast at obsessiveviewer.com. Thanks for joining us today, and please come back.